we go. Start number three. Ba -dum. You ready with the wave? I'm ready with the wave. Good morning. We had some false starts because I couldn't find where the cursor was on the screen. That's not a thing. I kept waving whenever she was <laughs> yeah. She's like, no, no, we're not. Oh, no. no. Yeah. She had to tell me where the cursor was. I couldn't see it. Good morning. How are we doing this? Oh, I have new buns. So they saw it again. That's going to be my new thing. Not even on purpose. Welcome to the Sun Dragon Sideshow. The Adventures of Rose and Rebecca, the VSC edition. The day where we try to sell you stuff. <laughs> like I said last week, I'm not even going to be coy about it anymore. We want to show you what we have in the shop. And we have too many things to show you in the shop. So, we picked several of our we this week favorites. I'm just remembering they sent us a new color of one of the things we're going to show that. that we don't have yet, so we won't talk about that now that I'm talking about it. Um, we might bring in new color to me. Anyway. <laughs> Hot mess. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in sunny downtown Brevard, North Carolina. I'm so glad it's not raining today. Brief respite. I'm Liz. I'm the minion at Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in lovely downtown. North Carolina. Glorious for Glorious. North Carolina. It is a cute little mountain town, actually. Um, um, yeah. So how's your day going? <laughs> I just went to the post office. It was an adventure. I found out things about Wisconsin addresses, which are really cool. That they're they're, they're different, but they work. Um, not different than other places where those addresses are. Oh my gosh, I'm just a mess today. I, we, we got a package to send out. Shout out to the Wisconsin. I don't remember. Anyway, shout out to you. But thank you, because like that's- It was cool. We've never sent a package to I, Wisconsin to an address like that before. I can the see. address was numbers and letters, letters okay. and numbers. And it looked vaguely like- It was really the, long. The, order of them looked vaguely familiar but i couldn't figure out why and i was like this doesn't look like a real address and it it was and today rebecca learned they use longitude and latitude which is really cool to mark the street address so um and there was a dog running around the post office and you know it was just it was a, it was an adventure um so i'm a little a dog running around in a shop in the post office? What? It's because the doors are propped open, so we don't have to touch anything. Um, I'm still looking. Hang on. Vamp, Liz, vamp. Vamp. Uh, <laughs> it was really cool. <laughs> it was cool for her to learn that. Yeah. Um, the, the vaguely familiar is I've seen longitude and latitude on different you know, You've things. You've seen that and before. So, yeah. It, I've just never seen it written as a street address. Mm -hmm. So... It was cool. It was very cool. Yeah. And let's try this one. I think this is it. Let's see. Yes, Sylvia. Sylvia. Shout, Shout out, out to Sylvia. Sylvia. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? I don't know. Oh, it's we, we know we know how to, you know, we know the routine that we're supposed to be in with customers. Ding. Um, it is morning and we're getting ready for our lesson. Shout out to Carla who's coming by. And um, yeah, so so we, we for a long time couldn't decide which yarns to show off today. We were debating even this morning. And I thought we should do a couple that have been in, in recent projects. So but there's one that I'm working on right now, which you know I pulled all this out for my morning meditation. I haven't wrapped it back up again yet. One of the yarns I'm using for my Wakanda Forever is the yarn I haven't knit with in a while. And I thought it would be fun to tell you all that. So I, we're gonna start with that. Because I decided to pick this one. Um, um, but I have a crocheted sample and I forgot to pull it. Yeah. Oh, it's in the same colorway. Yeah. Even. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm, a long time ago, I was trying to make a sweater with one of these colorways. I don't know where that is anymore. Hot mess in the shop. Um, so it's in the pit of despair. This, 
is where I'm at with the Wakanda forever. And just like last night, it's backlit um, when I put it up against my shirt. It's this yarn right here. But that, that's actually cool because you can see the thick, thin properties. Yeah, it's it's a little bit of a thick, thin. This the sugar bush motley. Yes, Liz has a good point. You can see the thick, thin. And if I hold it somewhere where you can't see through it, maybe, mm, no. You can see the colors of it. It's really slowly color changing because this is only like 20 to 30 to more stitches across. And when I look at it, if I could, I'm gonna try something. Um, yeah, this kind of helps you see that there's, there's like a grayish down here and then it gets green and now I'm into dark, I, dark green up top. I have that same mm -hmm. spot. So if I go like this, so you see the light, it's like the same color changing. Hers is crochet. There we go. So, and you can see where bits are thicker and bits are thinner. Um, because mm -hmm. it's a thick it's, thin. It's a thick thin and it has um, color gradations in it that end up looking very stripy, but long color shifts because like all of this up to from from down here up to my finger, I thought it was only gonna be a couple rows. It's like 10. And then this whole chunk in here is a lighter green to a darker green. There's a brown in here. The Motley is is fantastic stuff. It's technically a DK, but there are parts of it that, that will be almost as thin as fingering weight as you're knitting with it. So it'll have some see-through quality to it, potentially. Um, do you want to tell us that? Yes. The thicker parts of it we, are a DK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say it's classified by its thick, thickest chunks. Yeah. So yeah, for well, 100 grams, you're getting 328 yards. Which is awesome yardage. 300 meters. Mm -hmm. um, they're calling it a light DK, hand wash. Whatever. Actually, it's weird. It's not the three, the category for three is light. I'm like, oh, every, because anything that has a three on it will be called a light DK. Like a six is a super bulky. Like anything with a three, the word under it will probably say light. But it is a light DK. Oh, uh, looking on, on the tag for, for the what it is, and it was right in front of me. It's 60% super fine alpaca and 40% merino wool. Yes. Um, and you, it recommends a US 6 or 4 millimeter needle. There you go. So, and how much is it, Liz? It is $14.75. Okay. And let's see, you've piled the colors in front of me. Piled all the colors. <laughs> so, the color I am knitting with is it's called Flex of Forest. Yes. And it's green and gray and brown and different shades of all of those, which is really fun. And yarn is running away from us. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, the neutrals, oh my gosh, this is so, like, like these are all browns and grays, but they're all different. Yes, I had to look, because on camera, the exterior ones almost look the same, but they're not. Like, this has more green in it, and this one has more gray and brown in it. We've got in order. This is um, multi moss. I'll try to get these as as well captured in photos as I can. Um, rustic rainbow and twisted tan. Sugarbush really likes doing the alliteration for their names of things. These are the tealy ones. We have uh, peppered teal. It's kind of got silver and black or brown going through um, teal. <laughs> and then there's gold dust, which is teal oh, and that's golden. That's this one too. I wanna make yeah. sure we're not doubling up. That gold dust, that's the one um, I wanna make a sweater out of. That I, somewhere it's I have It's really yarn cool. And then this out. one is mauve mingle. It's and got bits that's of got, purple and- It's got purple and teal and brown and gray. Yeah. So cool. Um, these are some of the pinks. We've got a couple of different pinks. The one with brighter, the one here on my left, <laughs> I have problems with left and right. Flashy fuchsia has kind of some reddish tones to it, brown, gray, and bright pink. I think brown and gray is, is in every 
we're noticing this now. We've had this yarn for how many years? And we're noticing that everyone has brown and gray, maybe different tones of them. Yeah. And then something else fun is put in. This one is lighter. It's called Rose Hue. Just Rose Hue. It's it, really, really soft and pretty. It's got light and dark pinks and the brown and the gray. It's really pretty. This one is mosaic mango, so it has the mangoey. Mangoey, it's got a, a nice, um, like royal blue to navy blue, yeah. almost, and the and brown and the gray. Brown and gray, and then my my favorite favorite because it's you know dark and green and red is speckled scarlet. So we've got two reds. This one ha is is really just red with, with brown the brown and, and gray. gray, and then this one is burgundy blast. It is reds and purples and brown and gray. Yeah, it's like a light purple, almost a periwinkle, lavender periwinkle. It's just, so what is really neat about these, I mean, this has been so soft in it with, there, like, there are some thin parts, but then there's some lovely, lovely thick parts. Um, like this right here, this is the thin part. And then, um, let's see if I can unwind to a thicker part. It's probably, I'm seeing a thicker part. Because it's alpaca, it is really soft. Alpaca and merino, and merino is one of the softer of the wools. It is really soft and wonderful, and winter is coming. But this isn't really thick, but winter is coming. So The, the alpaca will <laughs> add warmth to the merino, and it is kind of got the wispy little hairs. Mm -hmm. So if you knit it just yeah, fuzzy. slightly looser than you mm -hmm. think you want to, the hairs will trap air and be oh, just yes. oh, warm. Oh, I was gonna sneeze. Yep, I still got, nope. Bless you. And that just sealed it. <laughs> I might have had to sneeze. I might have a whole bunch of yarn stuff up my nose, but she said, bless you. That'll take care of it. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm knitting on an eight right now. And it recommended what, a six? A six. I'm knitting on an eight, so you can see that there's some light through that. Like if I put it over my shirt, you can see through it. That's okay. It doesn't mean that, you know, it's totally transparent, but it's it's gonna have such wonderful drape. It's gonna be so fantastic. So, yay. And, and it is like many self-striping yarns. Uh, I mean, it, it gently fades, but really from a distance will look striping. Um, how it will stripe will depend on the width of what you make out of it. If you make a hat, it, it might only get through a few of the colors. If you make um, a sweater or something a lot wider out of it, like as this goes, because it's getting wider, um, I am almost to the point where I'm gonna be knitting across this whole thing and the stripes will change. You, you can check it out maybe Thursday or maybe next week. I gotta see how much time I have today. If the stripes will end up being the same thickness as the stripes on the feeder brook, or thinner, or thicker. I think that'll be a lovely experiment. It'll be it'll be fun to, yeah. to see. So um, I think it's just lovely. It'll be lovely for shawls. It'll be lovely for garments. Um, it's just a fun yarn, and so much yardage on one of them. Like if you're looking at yardage for a sweater, like say you needed a thousand yards for a sweater. Three. Just three. That's only three of them. So I think that's pretty cool. And we're having a sale throughout the month of September where if you put first moversary, a made up word, Liz made it up. <laughs> it's the one year anniversary of our move to this glorious big location. So online, and I will try to get these yarns up online by later today. Online, if you put first moversary, two words, and online you can see the words and we'll write it in the description below, you can save 10%. So think about it this way. If you buy 10 skeins, you, it's buy, it's really, you're really paying for nine. That's a lot of skeins to buy. But if you want the math to work for you, buy more. <laughs> anyway, buy what you need. It's fine. Um, you want to do the notion because, because? well, I, I kind of have an idea about how to, to go about. Oh, this. she's got an idea. I have an idea. Unless you, it, you, no, you it's fine. Do it the notion, I've been playing with the notion in front of me. So I order these on a whim. Every once in a while, I order things on whims and it's fun. Like the Nostapin. 
Um, these are called yarn keeps. Look at that, it looks like a little key. And here is the deal with them. Um, it's $5.95 for this pack, six pieces. You get six yarn keys, so it's about a dollar a key. Um, and they have a clip here and a clip here. Two different like little clips on them. So here's what you do. When we wind yarn, we, um, we will put the ball band in the center so you can, you can keep the ball band with the yarn because like, like these guys, that ball band can easily get lost. And then so easy. what the heck yarn am I knitting with? And I can't tell you how many people on social media groups that I'm on say, does anyone recognize this? What is it? I need more. And they're usually much nicer than that. But you know, it's what they're asking. And instead of just answering yarn, like Liz wants to, um, there's, if you go from the outside, like I am with this ball, the tag's still in there. I can pull it out. I can look at the information, but say you wanted to go pull from the inside or the, the ball band had popped out. That has happened already with um, all the skeins that I have for my night shift. Here's what you do with this. Now I haven't, um, I don't even know what I'm going to say. You haven't it, tested it, them? I, I haven't taken this, well, I'm testing it on air with you all, but I haven't taken it off this. I mean, I wouldn't keep them all together. I would take this, take one of them. The one up here, up here, we have a little notch. This goes on the yarn and this down here holds your tag. So I have my zombie barbecue here and I have the tag. So I recommend making it a little thicker, maybe folding it over. And then you can stick it, testing your progress, right? Too thick, I just discovered trying to put it where the fold was, it wasn't gonna stay put. Put it in a way that it'll stay. See, like that. And then the little hole here, you can grab one of, I should do this where you can see it. <laughs> Mountain of yarn, isn't it pretty? Mountain. She made it. Um, but take a strand or maybe a few, but I'm only gonna hold it off of one. Whoop, there you go. It's hooked onto your yarn. So now if I wanted to pull from the center, this is staying attached to my yarn so I can tell what yarn I have. I it's think actually it's really, kind of cool. It's, it is, it's kind of cool. Um, shout out to Shia. She was looking, she's the reason I got these. She was looking for handmade tags or tags that you can write your own yarn info on. The idea of these is as long as you haven't lost the ball band, before you lose the ball band, take it here. The piles of ball bands somewhere. Oh, we have piles of ball bands all around the shop. This would be a great way to keep it attached to the project we're working on. I like it. Again, yeah. they're sold in packs of six. It's pretty cool. I like it a lot. That's our notion for the day. If I can think of other notions to get up online, I'll let you know tomorrow. <laughs> or we'll do a bunch next week. Um, we did have a request to have our Swifts and Winders out of their packages. We mentioned them last week and how it's kind of hard to get them out of their packages. And shout out to Cheryl. She said, well, people are very visual and so am I. And I totally get that. Um, maybe I can compile a video to post another time with some of our Swifts and Winders in action. Um, Cause first of all, Liz bought one. So we don't have one to show you anymore cause it's at home. It, um, it, well, this, yeah. I mean, this, I it's not have, a bad thing. I, I mean, she needs three it. Swifts now. <laughs> that is a reason to go. I've ordered a replacement. Um, but it's kind of hard to keep a bunch of those in stock. So I tend to order them one at a time unless I have huge demand. If y'all let me know you really want Swifts and Winders, I'll get more. But um, we have other things we want to get through today and we got to get ready for the lesson. So I feeling like that rather than fumble through unboxing or, you know, we'd have to prep next week to have them out of the boxes and then try to get them like, wait, here's this one. Wait, here's that one. Here's, I think, I think I should try to put together a video like a side video that's yeah. just showing those off that I can edit and put together. Not something we can do today. So stay tuned. Maybe hot, maybe on that. So, I, 
it's a choose your own adventure papillon <laughs> kit thing. Like Rebecca Feel, goes, should I get it? Should I get the papillon off the? Thing? You could. Why don't Why don't you vamp Liz? No, so Liz is gonna talk. Rebecca said, "Hey, let's pull the Perth and the Heritage Wave." Things that morph and color change. They, they morph and color better. change. Fingering weight, whereas we've been talking a lot about feeder brook, this one, yeah. which is DK weight, and yeah. the superwash wave, which is DK weight. Let's let's get the thin stuff up online. Note to self or anybody, whatever. You can do <laughs> the papillon in a bigger weight. I did it. I've done it. I love it. It's just fantastic. But you there's gamble with how much yarn to use, but that you do. Thing. But there, there is there. We have specific yarn that it only takes you two, two balls plus a contrast. Actually, it's like one and a half balls plus a contrast to do the the normal size papillon. And we have other. You know, you can use it for anything. But I thought it's kind of like a choose your own adventure papillon. Um where you know you're like hey i want to do a papillon out of this color but there isn't a kit up so you know I'll leave that. um so i just ran around the shop and got some samples she did so <laughs> we're gonna talk papillons i'll show you what you can do with this yarn otherwise um we haven't showed this off on the show in a while because it's been hanging in front of the register this is this is the rainbow reef um which is probably this one. This one. No. That's King's Canyon. Really? I just looked. Wow. This is Rainbow Reef. We have two rainbow ones, and it's really hard to tell them apart. Rainbow Reef. This is my original Papillon that I made with Rainbow Reef that's very much like stained glass, and I love it. It's not as pretty as Liz's in the Daydream Dye Works, but I didn't have to change yarns and weave in a She whole lot didn't of have to weave in 60 ends. Rainbow Reef, black. Done. Done. Uh, shout out to Julie. She just emailed me about how these kits were out of stock, and I'm sorry they were out of stock during our sale. It's because someone bought up the last one. We still have them. We, I hadn't relisted them, but we have our 10% sale. So I'll get them back up. So the 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 Perth, mm. while you're showing off more Perth options, well, I will read. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Um, Kings Canyon. I just wanted to say that the Rainbow Reef doesn't have quite as much like deep purple in it. Kings Canyon, that one of the differences is, I thought Kings Canyon was deeper, but this one's lighter. I don't know. This is the Kings Canyon paired with a gray in a hat. It has some more vibrant purples in it, whereas this one doesn't get more purpley than like some mauve. So in some ways, I want to say the biggest difference between the two rainbows is how much, like which end of the rainbow they're the, the, on. Yeah. Like this doesn't have as much red. It, it's got kind of purpley colors in it. Yeah. So they're different ends. That's how we would try to classify them. They're different ends of the rainbow. Go ahead, Liz. So Perth is 80% superwash wool and 20% nylon. So it is sock content. You can make socks out of it. Mm -hmm. um, Although I would caution if you're making socks, like you can see how the color changes on a hat. The colors will change very slowly on socks. So matching socks can, the same thing with the wave we're about to show you. Matching socks, if you really need them to match, could be an issue. Could yes. But if you just want them to change two colors, awesome. Yep. It is 437 yards for 100 grams or 400 meters. Um, <laughs> knitting gauge is 27 to 32 stitches on a one to three. But you can knit on bigger needles. That's what they're recommending. Yeah. Crochet gauge is 21 to 32 on a B to an E. Put it on an H. You'll be happy with the difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm doing some um, uh, Fall River. Yep. Oh, oh. We, we did the Fall River out of one of these colors. Yes, and we showed off the Fall River before. Crocheting, the colors will change at a different rate. And I already grabbed enough things down that, unfortunately, I'm not going to grab the Fall River down. The some, Fall River picture is on your website. It is. So, or on the, one of the, the other videos site. we showed this yeah. off. This is um, a Gleam shawl, I think. I started a really long time ago. Um, and it's got short rows and things, so it's not necessarily showing how colors will change if you knit straight, because there's drop stitches and crazy things in this. But this is the, um, I'm just gonna read. <laughs> I'm um, this is Tasmanian Bay. The colorway Tasmanian Bay, isn't that pretty? So, um, 
So we have Alice. Tasmanian Bay. Alice Springs. Is our favorite to crochet with. It's very different if you knit with it, but it's got some pretty, it's almost, it's almost like a vintage Christmas if you wanted it to go that direction. Yeah. Or it's just got pretty, it's got like teals and reds and, and the creams. Creamy and, yellow, yeah. Um, the one I just held up, sorry, is um, it's got green teals and like fuchsia purples and almost some brownie oranges, like burnt sienna, I would say. Then we have Gold Coast, which is some lighter blues, some purple, but a lighter end of purple, mm -hmm. and some light brown. And nude and tens. Yeah. And I really want to do that. I've been eyeing that for doing some Fair Isle color work with navy on a sweater. Someday my dreams will come true. We have Yara River, which is That's a very green and color. blue and purple. That one would, it's, it's we've had people. See. We've had, it's very hard to see. There. Um, we've had people, we'll, we'll put photos up later. Yep. That one has sold very well with like a cream or white contrast for a Papillon. All of these would go well. We, we have some Papillon kits put together with the Perth, but now we're going to list the Perth by itself as well. So you can make your own Papillon, choose your own adventure. Make your own Papillon kit. That means I should put up Heritage as well, regular Heritage. We have so many colorways of straight up Heritage is like, is is solid sock weight colors um i will we won't necessarily show them all up here but i'll do my best to put as many of the, those up as as i can as well i don't think we have an indoor shopper today which means i might be able to get some of the stuff i'll try and we are selling the first for 1475 mm -hmm. okay. and it's complement for really beautiful papillons the other thing if you look at the tr traditional papillon kit combos you will see perth and you will see Cascade Heritage Wave because it does the same thing. This is what Rebecca did her yes. other Papillon. And that one's in the front window. I did not take that one down, but it looks like a monarch butterfly. <clears throat> I did that with black. It's one of the options you can get online. If you have any white left over, we don't sell this as a kit with the white accent for the pods at the bottom. But if you have some white left over, because it's not really, we wouldn't sell you a whole skein of yarn just for the pods. Um, and we haven't skeined it off to make kits that way. Um, but if you put white for the pods at the bottom, it is very reminiscent of a monarch butterfly. It's really cool. It is 75% merino, 25 nylon. Mm -hmm. um, it's machine washable. This one, did I say? I can't remember if I... I'm trying to remember right now. I, oh, I ordered... It is machine washable. I ordered some new colors of hair of wave. I cannot remember at this moment if it was in heritage or the superwash, the fingering weight or the DK weight. We will update you on that when it comes in. It's 437 sure yards per hundred grams. I want to say it was the heritage, no. but anyway, we'll add to it. Uh, they're recommending a one to three needle. Mm -hmm. It's so pretty. 28 to 32 and, stitches. Ooh, ooh, hold yours up again. These are the same skein, probably the same colorway, probably the same dye lot. I got to hold this closer to the yeah. camera for people to see. Skein to skein, they'll look really different, which means if it comes looking like this, but the picture you saw online looks like this, it is the same yarn. Same yarn. Same yarn. So that one's um, solar. Solar. Oranges and yellows and reds. So pretty. We have rainbow. Which, oddly enough, is the unicorn in the thicker. Yeah, and the rainbow, um, some of it has more blue than others. It's different parts of the rainbow. Yep. That one, again, I don't think has the purple end of the rainbow. But it's called rainbow. Yep. And skein to skein, that will look super different. This one is Seattle. So it's blues and grays. It's and Seahawks colors. It's Seahawks colors. Mm -hmm. It's um, pretty, though. Yeah, it's pretty Seahawks colors. Not to offend any Seahawks fans. Um, but some people are very partial to their teams, so it's not like you can only buy this if you're a Seahawks fan. And it's just they're pretty, based in it's pale colors. Washington State. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's where the, the yarn company is. So if you want to get your um, your holiday knitting on, there is this is called Holidays, and it's mostly green and red. It's got a little hints of some other colors in it, but it has that holiday tint to it. We have blues. It fades through lighter and darker blues. This one is one that I did um, my Dottie Cowl out of. 
that is really pretty. This one and the other one, it's, oh, it's called Grapes in this one too. Grapes has a lot of purples and pinks, nice and bright. We have Plume, it's a couple of different blues with grays running through it. I have to steal this one. I know, that this, one's everybody's favorite. This, um, we ordered a bunch of this. This is called Tropical. It is greens and blues and teals. And I gotta say, if you choose to do this with like, either a black or a cream, it really depends. With the black, it, it's gonna look like a peacock. If you want it to be a little bit more um, spring-like, I would go with the whiter of the cream. Mm -hmm. But if you do it with black, very peacock, think peacocks, right? Very stained glass. Kind of. It's gonna it's gonna intensify the colors of this, which are already intense. Awesome. We have roses, which is different reds. And, and almost some deep purples. And almost some deep. Like burgundy purple. Burgundies, yeah. We have, this one's checkers. It's very checkerboardy. It's, um, we've got red and grays, different tones of gray. Um, and last but not least. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show my ignorance of um, sports. I wanna say Georgia. Ooh, I think, yeah, Georgia Bulldogs, black and red. I'm sorry for Georgia Bulldog fans that I had to think about that for so long because I don't really follow sports, I'm sorry. Not or a, universities. Not a big purple fan, but this needs to go into a Halloween night shift. Or I not am a purple fan, and oh my gosh. It needs to be a papillon. That with like a black a would oh. be very blendy, but it's pretty. That with a white orange, would orange. just... I don't like orange, but colors. you know why. Oh, those aren't complimentary. Never mind. Okay. Anyway, it's called nightshade. Cool colors to go together. Yes. Um, the And I think we have at least a couple other colors coming. One is more pastel jewel tones. And one is, I think, called Flames, and it is more reds and um, browns and stuff, and just deeper reds. So I'm very excited about that. But what we just showed you is what we have in stock, and I will be getting up on the website later. Because we're not sure when UPS is going to FedEx. FedEx. That one comes from FedEx. Whoever. No, okay, so we just got a huge box from Cascade in yesterday with a whole lot of back orders. So black. For Papillons is back in stock. We had to, we were, we were, had to be so sad and not have black for so long. Not the the silk black, to my knowledge, has still not come in. The silk real black is what I use in both of mine, and it's the blackest black I can find. But their real black, the heritage, not the heritage silk, silk with the merino versus nylon with the merino. The silk um, deepens the color just a little bit, makes it pop a little bit more. But the nylon combo, first of all, it's more cost effective. And second of all, it's still really nice black. Still knits up really nice. So um, all the more reason for me to try to get, especially the neutrals of the heritage, but all of them. The problem is going to be if you're trying to pair your own colors and it's not a neutral, like a black, a white, or a cream. It's really hard to capture true color on um, photo and video especially when it comes to say reds and teals we're finding. Teals will oh, look yeah. blue. So um, choose your own adventure, pick from what we put up. Know that colors tend to be cooler. When I'm video editing them, I will try to pump up the warmth on the color, but it's hard to capture true color. And then the device that you're viewing it through may change all the hard work I did. One, so it may not matter. One of our knitters, shout out to Amy. Yeah, she has looked at Rebecca's online store on four different um, like a computer, computer model, tablet, I, tablet phone. iPad, phone, <laughs> and it's all four different colors. Mm -hmm. the, and it's the same thing that I've tried to represent yeah. true color. I keep seeing a yarn company advertise in my Facebook feed that says we make it true color, we capture it, and I, I'm like, what is your magic spell? Because I, I just. It'll change depending on what you view it on. And if you have a filter on your phone, some people have anti-glare stuff on their phones and that's gonna change color. And it's just, it, it's difficult, needless to say. So if you have any questions, email or call us and say, hey, I'm thinking about pairing this color with this color. Do you think that would work? And we will be honest with you. Well, and if you're local, mm -hmm. Tuesdays and Thursdays, Come by the shop and say, bring it out. 
I want to look at it. You can still buy it online and save your 10%. Mm -hmm. We, we've had actually quite a few we're people okay who that. are like, I just want to see it before I click buy on the, mm -hmm. the thing. That That's completely fine. We'll bring all the color options out or color options you hadn't even thought of. What are they doing outside? Moving chairs back. Why are they? It sounds like they're doing this with a chair. Anyway, okay. Because um, <laughs> they're doing that with a chair. Um, sorry, I was distracted. I squirreled. Um, yes, come by if you're local. Or sign up for inside shopping on Wednesdays and Fridays. Right now, we only have one appointment a day on those days, but you can sign up online. And I think I have the um, the link now in what I write below, but I'll try to double check that. So we will give you our best advice on if what you've picked will work. Even if it doesn't look like it does on film, we can still tell you if it will work. And we think you'll be happy with our um, appraisals of that. All right, so we should get ready for um, my lesson outside. Yay, the yeah, varsity, yeah, Carla. Yeah, we, there's always work to do inside. We don't have anyone signed up for today, and depending on how fast this goes up, maybe we will. <laughs> you have to sign up by noon on the day you want to visit. If you sign up later than that, we won't be here. But we're going to work our butts off to try to get the shop back in order when we don't have customers for so it's better for when we do anyway we love you all and we miss you and i feel like this was a little more rambly than usual but i guess rambly is our brand rambly anyway. is us <laughs> thank you for sharing some time with us and um i'm gonna get any time between now and my lesson which is in half an hour if i'm not working on this video i'm gonna be working on on getting photos of this stuff so i can put it online so, y'all have a good day. Like us, subscribe. Yes, all those things. Share us with people oh, who might want to subscribe. Yep. And tomorrow's Becky and Lizzie. Dear Becky and Lizzie, tomorrow. You, you don't have time to get a letter to us by tomorrow. You can get a letter to us for next week. But, so, if you want to write us, and it'll go on next week's show, it's Dear Becky and Lizzie, 35 South Broad Street. At Sun Dragon, Sun Dragon Art and Fiber. Ugh. Let me start it. <laughs> Dear Becky and Lizzie, Sun Dragon Art and Fiber, 35 South Broad Street, Brevard, North Carolina, 28712. Okay. And, and if you need a question answered tomorrow, and it's not going to get here by then, um, you can email me at liz at sundragonartandfiber.com. Okay. Thank you all. Stay safe. We miss you. Even we those of you. you we haven't met yet, and we love you, of course. Of course. Mm. <laughs> and come to um, Knit Night on Friday if you want to. We've had some new people dropping in, and it's been really fun. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop talking now. And stay tuned to Adventures of Liz and Rebecca tomorrow, along with Be dear Becky and Lily. And um, geez, Liz, work on your vamping. No. <laughs> I'm not good at vamping. I don't really call that vamping, but that's okay. <laughs> She's so good at what she does.